Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play The Legendary Starfy, though that's probably not what the title says anymore. In the last room we started off the game, and now we're in the coral reef where we just raised the water level in several rooms around, so now we want to enter this door and talk to this guy. Hey Staffy! This guy says all sorts of interesting things. Have a listen! I've been researching modes of sky transportation. I call my invention a balloon. I'm serious, it truly works. Wanna give it a try? Sure. Okay then. Seems that you also see the potential of my creation. Balloon instructions. A to rise upward. Let D-pad move left to right. So we technically saw a little foreshadowing for this last part, but within the game there are several vehicles for Starfy. They're used at set rooms, so if you go to the rooms where they are without doing the first one, the tutorial version of them, you just cannot access them. Like last time we saw an outline of a balloon we could not yet access. In fact, after this, I don't do this, uh, this part at least. But if you go back to that room where the outline was earlier in the level, you can now do another balloon minigame for some extra star pearls. You can also get an enemy for your encyclopedia there as well if you wanted to. We'll be doing that later on, though. Thanks to you, the experiment was a complete success! A completed balloon can now be used to travel to all sorts of places! Anytime you come across a balloon, feel free to use it! So now we can use that at any point in the game moving forward. So, about the title of the game. Uh, something I didn't mention last time is that in the fan patch, in the zip file for it, there are actually three different patches. I'm playing the one just called the Legendary Starfy, which does the same title as the first game released here in the West, but also keeps a lot of the localized names from that game, on top of keeping names relatively in tune for what characters would have been named had they been localized at the time. There's Densetsu no Starfy English, which just translates the literal Japanese text and keeps all the Japanese names there, so if you're a purist like that, that's a good one for you. But then there's one titled Starfy Origins, which is the same as this, only it has a different logo. That was to keep in tune with particularly how Nintendo handled Earthbound Beginnings when they released that during the Wii U's lifespan. That spinning guy who took away my ruby is hanging out through this door. He's dangerous while spinning around, but he's weak when he's not moving. His head! Alright, Staffy, no excuses. You gotta win. And honestly, for the rest of the LP, I'm probably gonna go with the name Starfy Origins just to kind of differentiate this uh, to the DS game. Because I don't want to just call it the Japanese title, considering it is the fan patch, so I think that's gonna be what we do, even though it's not the ROM patch I used for this LP. Conk? Who the conk are you? I'll never conk let you have Ruby. So, with one exception, every boss in the game has five hit points, hit the weak point five times while dodging their attacks, and you're good as usual. Conk here is particularly weak on his noggin, so go in from above and stay off the ground. At the start, he only really tends to move left and right a little bit with the occasional jump, but as you get lower on health, he does add some new moves to his repertoire, like jumping high up in the air to try and just slam down on you. Though, you can also kind of hit him off screen if you're good about things. It's not too hard. Stay low on the ground when he jumps to have as much time as you can to move, and you'll be fine. I'd say there's only like two bosses in this game that are outright troublesome, uh, even on a first playthrough. Alright, Mo, that's Conk out of the way. Ruby should be spawning in there on the right right about now. Go and, uh, try your best, buddy. Ruby, you're alright! A bad guy like that was no match for me! To defeat such a horrible monster, Mo, you're amazing! That's right, Mo will protect ya! Hey, Staff, get out of here! Me and my Ruby are going on a date. Give him some space. Shouldn't you be hurrying on back to Puff Top anyway? Do you know how to return to Puff Top, Starfy? I'm sure you'll find a way back, won't you, Starf? I know a whale who's very smart. Perhaps she knows something. Oi, that's right! That gal knows all about the ocean! You should ask her! Okay, Ruby, let's get going. See you around, Starf. Starfy's adventure continues as he sets off for the whale. And that's the Coral Reef. That's our first actual level out of the way. The levels in this game do tend to get a little on the longer side, yeah, but we do generally clear one per video, and I think they do a good job actually having a nice difficulty curve throughout in terms of actual complexity of what's going on, even if Starfy's mechanics don't change that much as you go. 
Also, because we hit a certain amount of star pearls, now Mo has been added to the postcard. Two down, 18 more to go. With that, it's now time for, I guess, technically level two, the Stranded Whale. Staffy seeks out advice on how to return to Puff Top. Also, Mo, what are you doing in the image? Didn't you stay behind with Ruby? These screens for the stages are probably the most Kirby core thing in the game just because of what Kirby tends to do with the start of New Worlds. I actually like them a lot. They have a lot of personality and some really cute animations going on. Now, something to keep in mind if you're trying to get a lot of Star Pearls early on. Yes, you can combo enemies, but not every set of enemies is going to be comboable. Like, yes, I could do that set right there. But a lot of other times, level design just isn't in your favor for doing that. They usually are very deliberate about which enemies you can combo quickly. Hey, stop! I've been waiting for you. It should took you a while to get here. Huh? How's the date? Ah, uh, don't worry about that. But now that things are back to normal, I'll definitely capture her heart next time. Well, Staff, are you ready to become my sidekick as we adventure across the ocean? What, returning to Puff-Top? But isn't bringing peace to the seas more important? Okay, let's ask that whale where the bad guy's red. Although, it seems like she's been in some sort of pain since I arrived. Perhaps she swallowed something strange? Staff, let's lend her a hand. Wow, what's that? She's thrashing about in her sleep. Yo, Staff, be a pal and do something to wake her up. Huh, perhaps tickling her stomach would do the trick? I'll wait here. So now we need to backtrack through the same level design with some added blocks and other hazards, but we also got a new thing to interact with here. Bubbles. Bubbles are a little iffy with their detection on collision. The thing is with them, you cannot pass through them opposite the direction they're moving, but you can travel through them if you're traveling the same direction or perpendicular to them. So you can move sideways through them no problem, but in cases like that where you have to move slightly down or up through them, be careful in which direction they're actually moving. They don't come up that often, but keep that in mind all the same. So now that we're here, let's actually, I guess, uh, tickle her belly, as Mo said. And I guess that worked, so now we can travel back there and go talk to them again. Usually on the way back to the way I'm a little more reckless than I'm being now because you can be pretty reckless with your movement in the water especially and be fine because there's enough star pearls along the way to recover any hits you take. On top of that, something I haven't noted yet, every mermaid shell you hit for a checkpoint is an instant health recovery anyway, so you have plenty of safety nets along the way. Come on, Staff, she's still fast asleep! What's that? The whale's belly button? What are you talking about? <laughs> Hurts! It hurts! My stomach, it hurts! Hey, you're awake! We got something to ask you! Oh, my stomach, so much pain, help me! Ah, stop your whining, we're asking you a question here. Ah, fine, what's your problem? Earlier when I was eating, I swallowed something strange along with my food. Mmm, delicious! The fish around here sure are tasty! Oh, well, if it isn't a big, dumb faced whale. <laughs> I'll into your stomach and cause a whale to paint. Oh, uh, ouch! Oh, 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 that hurts. <laughs> dumb whale, you made a big mistake by swallowing me. Ha! 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 It's time to let loose! <laughs> oh, it hurts! My stomach's in raging pain! Duh, of course it is after swallowing something like that! It hurts! It hurts! Do something! What do you mean? How can we do anything about something in your stomach? Simple, like this! Oh, that is not how I plan to die. Mo, tell me it's a soft landing at least! Uh, hey, what was that all about? Come on, man. I guess we're stuck in here now, so we might as well search for that intruder. Be careful around here, and take caution as you travel through the narrow passages. So now we're in the whale, and we start off with a relatively slow auto-scroller. Uh, there are going to be some blocks you need to destroy along the way, but you need to be careful because... There are two distinct types of blocks. Ones you can pass through, and then ones that have little, like, iron balls in them that you can slightly see through them. If you hit those balls, you don't take damage, but you do bounce off of them, so you can't go that direction, like right there. 
now I've already mentioned this is a fan translation patch I'm playing. This game was only ever released in Japan. In fact, all four of the first Starfy games were Japan exclusive. It was only because of how well the DS was doing outside of Japan that they decided to bring Starfy 5 over to the West. In fact, in a 2009 interview with Nintendo Life, uh, the developers revealed they had wanted to try to bring these games outside of Japan for a while, but, and I quote directly from the interview, Nintendo of America always thought the games were a bit too Japanese for a release outside of Japan, which that's a note I can see a lot of developers saying, especially in the late 90s, early 2000s, about some games, but Starfy doesn't feel like it really needs that, considering most of it's just visuals with character designs. Hold it, Starf, it's too dangerous to go any further. Curious what's up ahead? But for now, it'd be best if you went somewhere else. This is another vehicle section we actually don't have the vehicle for, and we won't for a while, so we're just gonna move on. For now, be careful in this section, because these little, like, blobs here actively push you in the direction they're facing, and you cannot fight the flow of them at the moment, so just avoid them as best you can. Now, something to keep in mind about some of the enemies in this stage, particularly the little flames, uh, they... I guess they're sort of meant to be antibodies or inflammation. They actively do have a range of influence where once they start getting towards the end of that or they're on screen for a certain amount of time, they just start dissipating. So if you want, you can just completely ignore these enemies and only take out one to get them for your encyclopedia and you'll be good. For now, though, it's time for our next minigame. Shuffle Shades. <laughs> my, don't you look like quite the weak one. In a jam? Then perhaps give my challenge a try. Play the minigame? Absolutely. Destroy the can containing sunglasses before time runs out. There's also a limit to how many times you can shoot, so aim carefully. A for shooting, B and the D-pad to move quickly, D-pad to move. So sunglasses get randomly placed in one of the cans and they bounce around the field, uh, sort of like the DVD logo, as it did once upon a time. While you do have a time limit, your failure state here isn't missing the correct can, it's not breaking that can totally within the set amount of shots of five that are on the right side of the screen. Three shots on the right can, and you're good. I've never noticed that Starfy Sprite actually gets sunglasses there, huh? Eh, you're getting better. Take these pearls as a prize. The pearls you get from minigames for right now isn't a lot to write home about, but that can actually help you get towards your end goal uh, for maxing out the postcard uh, later on. Although for right now, it's also not a bad way to get like an extra health point back in the case you're running low when you're near a minigame door anyway. We can't help that person there for now, so we'll have to come back here. See that stuff? That poor creature trapped by those spiky guys? That's Luby, a friend of the whale. Hey, I bet she knows something about why the whale's stomach is acting up. All right, stuff, you better rescue her. But with those spiky guys surrounding her, getting close might be difficult. Huh, <sighs> guess I'll have to go find someone who can get rid of them for us. Pretty Coral! I had planned to give this to Ruby as a present. Bah. Okay, then get going. There's all sorts of creatures through this door. I don't know why the audio cut out in the middle of that cutscene, by the way. I think maybe my OBS just messed up there for some reason. Uh, then I clicked on a different window for a second. Through the door to the right, there's a tough-looking octopus inside a jar. Perhaps he can help you become stronger. It's settled then. Go and have a look for him. While you're doing that, I'll continue looking around here. Moe's advice there is solid. There are several doorways in this room, but many of them we can't access yet because they're behind the blocks we cannot break. So we want to head here to the doorway on the right and go see that octopus in question. I do like that the game does this a lot. There's a lot of times we have somewhat open areas with a lot of pathways, but Moe's always somewhere nearby to point you in the general right direction. Sure. Hey, you. I've never seen you around here before. The wimpy spin you have. You'll never get anywhere with that. Might is the true essence of any star spin. Spin an impact with might. Might, might. Use it to return here. Chee! Mighty star spin instructions. While holding the D-pad, doing a star spin will send you flying in that direction with might. This is one of the few upgrades Starfy actually gets through the game. Now, if we do a star spin while holding a direction, you charge in that direction, which you can use to take out certain enemies you couldn't before, or at least knock them around, or you can most primarily use it to resist any kind of current in the water, like the ones in these blobs, or any actual currents in the water for now. There are some you can't resist, uh, but they are notably stronger looking in their animation to begin with. Phew, not too shabby. 
You can break blocks with it too. Make sure to practice lots. Now go get him. She. Notably, now we can also break the blue blocks we saw in this room in the previous one, though they do take two spins. By and large, you can now break any block that looks like it's unbreakable. Mostly. Again, there's one exception type, but we'll talk more about that down the line. We can't break these metal blocks, though. Those are permanently impassable. So now that we have the upgraded star spin and we're back in this room, we want to check out the doors around the perimeter of the area that don't lead to the octopus in order to find out our next general direction. Uh, there is one direct order you need to go in order to get this done, but I think I show off a couple of them beforehand just to showcase the reason why we're doing the thing we are. We are so, so hungry. hungry. We, we have been able to perform our as a result. result. Recently, something bad has affected the whale. We're, we're worried. worried. Please, Please bring food. food. We should probably help them out as soon as possible. So let's check the door over here to see if there's any food for them. Also, I should note, while our star spin has been upgraded, uh, the amount of times you have to spin in a row in order to get dizzy has not changed. If anything, you need to get much better about spinning in a rhythm once you get this upgrade. Because if you go dizzy in the middle of a water current, that's a lot of lost progress. Stuffed toy, stuffed toy, my baby stuffed toy's gone missing. Don't cry, don't be crabby. <laughs> crying, crying, constantly crabby. Just where can that stuffed toy be? Well, no food that way, so I guess we're going to the north then. Hitting some of these blocks in the current with the upgraded star spin can be a little unwieldy because you have to resist the current while also trying to hit the blocks. But as you can see, you can also just go straight to them from the side. Ah, oh, you boy, do you have some business with me? Even with how pretty I am, it still feels like something is missing. If only I had a pretty accessory to mix things up. Hey boy, that coral you're holding is the very definition of pretty. Hand it over the pretty coral. My, my, what perfection. My beauty has never reached such heights before. Here, take this as thanks. Cute stuffed toy. Mm, gee, I, 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 I have a feeling we've heard about that relatively recently. I, I can't quite place where, except that it's to the west for some reason, huh? Oh, what a crabapple of a predicament. Where could the toy be? There, there, don't be crabby. <laughs> oh, don't cry, you'll make Papa crabby too. Hand it over the cute stuffed toy. That's it, that's it. Where did it scuttle off to? Yay, yay! You really lent a claw to this old crab. Take this. Tasty looking cake. And I think we know where this goes by now. Also, I'm going the really wrong way about this. Instead of trying to resist this current, I should just try to go in from the other side. We're, We're so, so hungry. hungry. We don't have the Oh, there it came! Looks delicious! It's just a trick room. Room. Hand it over the tasty looking cake. That's much better. better. Thank, Thank you very much, much Starfy. Now, now we can get, get back to work. Huh? Losing trouble. trouble. That's, That's bad. bad. All right, so now we're good to go help out that mirror we saw. With a shifting camera perspective, it makes me think we're in an auto scroller for a split second. You saved me! Eh, don't mention it. What were you doing here? The whale's having stomach trouble, so I thought I'd have a look. Even so, you're quite the blockhead for getting yourself into trouble like that. Uh, putting that aside, the bad thing the whale swelled isn't far from here. Oh yeah? Staff, you know what we gotta do. I'll head on over there now. Uh... What? Oh, I get it. There's gonna be some fighting. You go off and hide somewhere. Staff, remember that door that was closed? We should head through there. I'll go on ahead. Don't keep me waiting. Now, we already saw that door earlier, I just didn't remark on it. Now that we have the spin, we can get to a shortcut here to the entrance of this room and go investigate that a room or two ago. If you're fast at reading, some of the levels in this game can go by pretty quickly. Uh, others are a bit better paced with it or have more dialogue in the period. It seems the cause of the pain is some spiky guy. Your star spin might not work on him. Unless maybe if those spikes were gone, your star spin might have an effect. And those walls look spiky, too. Wait, I wonder what's stronger, him or the wall? Thank you for your hint there, Mo. 
And as usual, we got some star pearls and enemies to kill before the boss fights, just to get your number a little higher on top of getting some health back. And honestly, not for nothing, I think this boss is easier than Conk in the previous stage. Heh, <laughs> what's with you? You here to pick a fight? <laughs> So, Bankaross here is spiky, and we can't outright damage him. The walls are also spiky, and those can damage you outright. With that said, let's fight fire with fire and have him do his only attack, really, which is a spiraling tackle into the spikes, and eventually he'll hit them and just outright destroy his own spikes, leaving him open for damage. Do this five times, and he's down. I think he has more attacks, but he almost always opens with the tackle, so you can just sort of bait him into a nearby wall pretty quickly. There's even some cases I've had where if you get him near a corner, he'll hit the same wall over and over again, trying to just move, period. So this fight can go by pretty quickly. I genuinely think it's the easier fight between this and Kong. Because Kong has a little more unpredictability due to his jumps. Bankeros, not so much. Sometimes with fights like this, though, I do wonder how much the difficulty is lessened because I'm not playing on the screen it was originally intended for. Because I feel like on a launch Game Boy Advance screen... This would probably be a sufficiently dark enough area that this could be troublesome. And there he is, hitting himself twice in the same wall. You did it! You defeated him! Of course, you should expect nothing less than the great Mo. However, there's still a problem left unsolved. Eh, just leave it to the Great Mo. I'll sort it out for you. Well, that's reassuring. At the Sea of Ice, my friends, the Gelato Sisters, they ran off to fight a bad guy over there, but... Hey, say no more. Mo's got you covered. <laughs> I'll have the whale send you guys over to the Sea of Ice at once. Uh... Hey, what's that shaking? Was there really no better way for us to get out of there? Starfy and Mo flew to the Sea of Ice. And that's that stage. I like that one a lot, honestly. I'd say my favorite stages of the game are probably stages, if we count this as stage two, stage two through five on the whole. I like that period of the game a lot. But with that, I'm gonna need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part three, we're gonna head into stage three and see what's going on over at the Sea of Ice. See you guys then.